Scratch, and as you just want to try to make sure that you've got everything covered, but we do have the start of this round, of course, round seven here, Alex versus Rich. Alex is going to be leading with the Porygon 2 and the Amoongus actually getting the download boost, favoring, um, of course, one of the stat increases. However, over on Rich's side, we've got that fake out immediately available, accompanied by that Ogre Pond. Yeah, the fake out is really nice going into this turn because you can go for it into the Porygon 2 to prevent a Trick Room going up this turn or any damage coming out onto your side of the field because with the safety goggles that you've got access to on the Incineroar yep. and having a Grass-type Ogopon, you aren't threatened by any sleep that could potentially come out from that Amoongus, so it's not really causing any pressure at the moment. Yep. Of course, has the ability to Pollen Puff into your Ogopon, do a little bit of damage that way, yep. but you can potentially get some nice big damage yourself from the Ogopon into that Porygon 2, start wearing it down early on. Yeah, and I think it's something that you're going to have to be able to be one step ahead at any given time because this is such a board state heavy matchup right now. Hence why actually Alex utilizing the uh, combo O as a switch in there wants to try to capitalize off of a bit of a passive setup over on Richard's side. Whilst we do have the knockoff coming out, Eviolite as well as combination with that Ivy Cudgel being able to bring down the Porygon 2 to just about half of its HP. However, Trick Room is now set up this combo oh, may actually be able to start getting those iron defenses going yeah that's something that you need to be aware of if you're richard the the fact that if you are alex you've lost your yolite item yeah uh, richard's probably happy about that because it means it's going to be easier to damage going forward in this match but i think again both trainers probably happy with the outcome here where the trick room's up for alex he's in a position where combo o is on the field like yep. you say he can get those iron defenses under his belt start going for those now it's not threatened by anything in front of him that richard has has to adjust and that's what we're going to see here yeah as it is going to be switching out uh the ogre pond that is for the raging bolts you want to be able to directly threaten this combo oh as the Pygon 2 even though it does not yet uh no longer have an evia light it does get a recover going for itself being able to nearly come back up to full hp but actually now having the special attack dropped back down to neutral from that download boost uh earlier will be quite nice at least because of the Rage Bolt that's now in the field, you know, it's not going to be able to take as much damage with those Ice Beams. But most importantly here, Lee, we do have the Komo O up to plus two of its defense uh, stat stages and now threatening those body presses. Yeah, and you know, I think at the moment, I, it's a nice play from Richard where he's bringing in the Raging Ball to pressure the Dragon-type Komo O uh, <laughs> with those Dragon-type attacks like the Draco Meteor because the Komo O not going to want to take those big special attacks, kind of forcing Alex's hand to maybe, okay, do I protect here or yep. do I switch in the Amoongus to maybe Rage Powder or do I Terrestrialize? Do I make that leap? You can see that Richard has got the Landorus in the back of his team. He hasn't revealed it yet, but I think one of the things that Richard has to try and do over these next few turns is utilize the fake out pressure that he's got with the Incineroar, weave that in, and then the follow me support as well with the Ogapon to try and get through these trick room turns to get that Landorus in a position where it can threaten the comma all. But you've got to worry about the Amoongus and the Porygon too yeah. if you're trying to do that because both support this Pokemon extremely well. Well, and that's sort of like the, the hinge of being able to have that additional redirection support, but it's not only redirection when it comes to Amoongus, it's also the Pollen Puffs as well as those spores that it can, by status-wise, threaten over on Richard's side of the field. Hence why we actually see the Chroma O go for the Protect here, just wanting to wait for the reposition of the Amoongus to be able to redirect and sort of focus into the slot as we do have that Terra, uh, terra Fairy um, terrestrialization from that Raging Bolt. Uh, Draco Meter actually being able to do quite a lot of damage onto the Amoongus. Uh, however, it's at the cost of now being a minus two of its special attack, so it's not going to be able to deal as much in the subsequent turn. No, and you've got, if you are Alex, in the position where you can pretty much just switch that Amoongus straight back out, activate that Regenerator ability, get a bit of health back, get your Porygon 2 back onto the field to support that combo or the Draco Meter are going to be weakened, of course. Going for that Fairy Terrestrialization as well does put you with threat from the Komo all because it has got access to Iron Head and you can't ignore that now. Yeah, and I think because of these Intimidate and Parting Shot cycles, we've actually seen the Komo now being brought down to minus two of its attack, so it won't be able to threaten as much as it liked. However, Pollen Puff, this may be a double up right now, targeting down the Ogre Pond. It does, and it actually picks up the KO there, proving that Pollen Puff is not only a support move, it is there to be able to deal respectable amounts of damage onto those 
grass types. That is a huge opportunity that Alex has taken, griped and made sure that he gets a Pokemon while his Trick Room is set up. Exactly what you want to be doing in this situation. Now Richard is able to bring in the Landorus, but probably not in the most preferable situation. Yep. Trick Room's still in effect, but the one thing that Landorus has to worry about is the spawn from Amoongus, but he does have that Incineroar next to it right now, and mm -hmm. the fake out is active. So yep. for one turn, you can potentially get a substitute set up. If you go for the fake out into the Amoongus, mm -hmm. potentially get a fake out set up. You're in a decent position to try and stall out the rest of these Trick Room turns, and then put yourself in that position where you can get those Earth Powers off into the Comma All, because going with physical attacks into that Pokemon, it's just not going to work after those Iron Defenses. Yeah, which is, I think, what Richard is trying to hinge on when it comes to uh, this Landorus, as well as the Raging Bolt in the back. However, Fake Out into the Amundus, the Incineral will be uh, taking a bit of chip damage due to the Rocky Helmet, but oh. guess what? Guess what isn't chip damage? That Body Press that just picks up the raw KO onto that slot, and all of a sudden, Alex is now uh, still having all four of his Pokemon versus Richard's final two. Yeah, that is a huge turn. You can say, okay, well, yes, tr get an attack off with your Landorus. Get your substitute up if you want. If you want to waste that fake out into my Amoongus, I'm going to body press you, and yeah. I'm going to pick up the knockout. Knowing that that terrestrialization has already went onto the Raging Bolt earlier on in this game, makes it such an easier target to go into the Incineroar, yeah. and you see that you don't need much of those boosts to be able to pick up the, the knockout onto that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Taking Richard down to his last two Pokemon, and Alex in the driving seat in this match. Yeah, he really has However, there's also the trick room that has just now expired. So, uh, speed wise, there may be a case that Richard's going to be able to actually outspeed. And Alex may be forced to try to get some reposition defensive um, moves going right now. You want to at least be able to get that regenerator proc at some point, bring that Amugus back in for a later redirection, and perhaps either bring in the Porygon 2, have that potential set up for a trick room yet again if there's no focus down on it, or reveal the final fourth Pokemon, <laughs> Bing Ting Lu. And yeah, the perfect Pokemon to bring in here for Alex because it reduces the uh, damage done by these big special attacking moves coming out oh. from the Landorus. You can see the Earth Power here wow. just not effective <laughs> at all and Beautiful. protecting that Como all. Yeah, protecting the Chroma as the body press did try to target down that Landorus. And you see the double, uh, should I say, the uh, focus of that Thunderbolt doesn't pick up any sort of paralysis on the Chroma O. Does deal a bit of chip damage, but of course, due to that Dragon typing, will be able to resist it and get additional HP recovered at the end of the turn. So all of a sudden, Lee, we've got this Ting Lu on the field, which actually can threaten uh, with any potential focus downs on the perhaps the Landorus, because that's surely the focus and key for Alex here. I think if you get rid of the Landorus, this match is very easy to kind of close up after that because of the Raging Bolt, unfortunately, it does have the Fairy Terror typing here. You would have said, okay, well, maybe the Terror Blast would have been really good in this situation because then you could pressure that Ting Lu a little bit more than you can at the moment. But unfortunately, having to rely on things like Thunderbolt, Thunderclap, and Draco Meteor, yeah. probably not going to be enough to get you through in this match. Which is what Richard has correctly identified, protecting that Landorus from any sort of focus down on what Whilst the Draco Media, you could see Vessel of Ruin, Assault Vest that is available. Uh, it sort of shrugs that off completely there, trying to, as we mentioned, uh, focus down on the Landorus from Alex's side. But now that the Raging Bolt is at minus two of its special attack, there is Vessel of Ruin that is still on the field. This isn't really looking good for Raging Bolt. No, it's not. And I think because of that, that minus two drop there, it's just not going to be effective. You're relying on critical hits. As we see, a huge Earth Power come out from oh. the Landorus and finally pick up the knockout onto the Komo, but this leaves the Ting Lu in a position where it can get a big attack off this turn. Oh, but the Draco Media does of course connect, however, no critical hits to be found. Now further dropping it to minus four of its special attack prowess, whilst the Throat Chop actually doing some really good respectable damage onto the Landorus, and all of a sudden you've got this sort of um, very bulky core of uh, Pokemon actually being able to weigh out uh, the resources from Richard's side. So Richard has done a good job in trying to at least protect the Landorus as best as possible. However, it's just the fact that there's so many resources still available on Alex's side. Yeah, you can see how much that Earth Power does to the Porygon 2 without the Eviolite and the Draco Meteor, oh. but because of those drops, just not able to do enough damage here. The Tinglu going to be able to pick up the Landorus, leaving that Raging Bolt. 
in a really, really awkward position. Yeah, very awkward indeed. I mean, I think at least from Richard's side, what he was trying to bank on was trying to pick up a critical head, yeah. force the trick room to no longer actually be set and still have that speed control advantage on his side of the field. But given the situation, this Raging Ball at minus four special attack, it's not looking too hot at all. As we see Alex just making the customary defensive switches where necessary, get that recover going, have the uh, potential of going for the spoil the subsequent turn in order to pick up this game one. Yeah, he's not taking any risks here, just doing nope. it, just doing what he needs to to close this up. Obviously yeah. it gives him a bit of time to maybe think as well what he wants to do going into game two, because I'd say you probably want to adjust a few things, even though this game one plan has worked. Mm -hmm. I think Richard is obviously going to have to adjust his plan and Alex probably trying to do exactly what his opponent is doing in this situation, figuring out what is the best plan going into that next game too. If you're Richard, tie it up. If you're Alex, kind of close it out. We are going to see the terrestrialization from the Porygon too, though. It's going to be that poison terror type as the sport comes out into that Raging Bolt yeah. as it takes a nice little nap. Takes a bit of a doozy of a nap there. Um, whilst, of course, the Terror Blast poison from that Porygon 2 will be focusing down on it. Wow, dealing so wow. much damage, of course, with a critical hit and it naturally being a fairy terrestrialization. So Alex just really honing down on what needed to be done, being able to dispatch of this game one and force Richard to have to really try to come back to the drawing board in option of that game two. I had to look again to see if that was an Assault Fest <laughs> Raging Ball. It has had the download yeah. boost onto its special exactly. attack, but that is still a very so strong much. attack from something that you wouldn't expect to be hitting as hard. Porygon 2 making very quick work of that. And even though in this game you thought, mm, Porygon 2 probably not going to have as much of an impact as Alex would have liked yeah. losing the Eviolai very early on to that knockoff from the Incineral came back right at the end alongside that Amoongus closing things up and excellently done again by, by Alex. Yeah, so I think if you're Richard then from your side of the uh, field, Landris, like we had highlighted, is a great player going into Alex's team, but I think the fact that Alex had that core four of the uh, in, of the uh, Ting Lu, you had the Porygon 2, the Amoongus, as well as that Koma O, sort of had the switching synergy that was required in order to always have something that directly threatens most likely a two-hit KO or a Spore onto the Landra slot. So you never felt 100% safe from Richard's side. So maybe there could be some sort of venue of getting some sort of substitute set up, maybe allow for the damage output not only being dependent on the Landorus. Yeah, I... I I really like the idea that you mentioned the substitute. I think if you do lead out with it, you have to be careful around, in particular, the Porygon 2, because it does have access to that Ice Beam. That can threaten you pretty hard, but yeah. I think in that situation, you're almost forcing the Porygon 2 to use an attack rather than use the Trick Room, which puts you at a definite disadvantage, because if you are Richard and the Trick Room goes up, looking at his team, he's not really got the slowest of Pokémon. You have to stall yeah. the Trick Room turns out. And you, we saw in game one, if you do that, you go down that route of stalling out the Trick Room turns, you have to try and not lose as many resources through that process mm -hmm. to get to the point where the Trick Room's ended yeah. and you've got enough in the in, on the field to be able to close out and pressure Alex, which he didn't in that game one. Yeah, but it will be left to be seen if there are going to be any sort of adaptations right now in this game two. We see Alex leading with the Porygon 2 and that Como O versus the Landorus Incarnate and the Incineral on Richard's side as of course we do have that special attack increase due to the download ability once again. So uh, there's uh, really different ways that you can go about with this Porygon 2. You can directly threaten when you get a download boost like that. Yeah, you can, and I think that really m puts all the emphasis from the Incineral to go for the fake out into the Porygon too, because yeah. if you leave it alone, like we already mentioned prior to coming into this game, it's either going to get the Trick Room up or it's going to fire an attack off yep. to prevent that substitute from staying intact. I think you can utilize this turn very effectively with your Incineral to stop the Porygon 2 at least for one turn, prevent that attack or the Trick Room going up, which we have seen here, and yep. potentially a substitute to just allow you a little bit more room going forward in this match. Yeah, that's sort of what you're trying to look for if you are rich, as uh, that is definitely the situation that we're seeing right here. The utilization of the substitute allows you to at least extend that longevity for the Landorus, which is so well needed right now. We saw that it kept on being threatened in that game one, and it had to alternate between protect, attack, protect, attack, 
attack. And now you've got that substitute up. You're no longer, um, uh, you know, um, exposed to any fake out or any direct KOs being taken up on it. Yeah, and now this turn you've got the opportunity to potentially double up into the Porygon 2. You know it's not going to protect there, so you can go for the knockoff into it and either go for a big attack into the Porygon 2 here mm -hmm. or maybe even predict uh, a double up from the opposite side of the field and go for a protect yourself. We're not going to see that though on Earth Pirate into the Ting Lu. Oh, dealing so little damage there uh, in combination with that parting shot means it will be dealing even lesser damage because of its attack uh, now being dropped. Uh, but yeah, so in this uh, scenario, Richard is going to be able to get that pivot action going, wants to likely be able to bring something in to directly threaten that Ting Lu. However, we know that the Porygon 2 still has yet to make a move in combination with that throw chop. This could be a double up right here. Does the substitute break is the real question. It does, even with that parting shot, bringing it down to minus one of its attack, but no follow up there with the ice beam, just a trick room. I think a really smart play here from Alex because not opting to go for the attack into there, get caught out by potentially a protect from the landers going for the safe option, the most consistent option, getting your speed control on the field. And now you're in the position where you can go for the ice beam into the landers. Or you can terrestrialize, mm. go for that poison terror attack into the ogre opponent and double up into that slot. Oh, that's a good shout. And maybe could uh, actually lead Alex to getting a switch out of the Ting Lu there. You want to actually try to catch your opponent off guard, you know, remove the Vessel of Ruin and try to capitalize off of that with the a special attack boost on the point on two but of course that's uh, left to be seen oh and actually may be the play right now as Tinlu does indeed switch up for the Amoongus a really nice option coming onto the field now going to be really able to take advantage of these trickery turns and because of that threat from the ice beam the Landorus Incarnate now forced off the field Incineroar making its way back to drop another Intimidate yeah another Intimidate it will be able to have Fake Out available in the subsequent turn however Ogrepon just wanted to play safe right here no terrestrialization from either of these trainers, but just a focus down Terror Blast into the Ogrepon. So we did quite uh, correctly identify that Ogrepon being a key player right now, having that redirection, being able to have to be that direct threat towards a Ting Lu that hasn't terrestrialized. So Alex just wanted to try to secure that slot in order to open up his game plan. Yeah, now Alex in a position where he has to be a bit careful with his Porygon too, although he has got the speed control advantage here. He's in not really in a position to be as effective as he would like it to be. The safety goggles on the Incineroar on Richard's side of the field really protecting it from any spores. It is going to be threatened by a potential Flare Blitz this turn, and the Ogre Pond as well. Does have to be careful around a Pollen Puff, but, be, you know, I think the thing is you are not really threatened by a knockout this turn, so you're going to be able to get some big damage off why we're seeing the Amoongus leave the field, Costa. Yeah, so no actual focus down with Pollen Puffs, or maybe even reads into no redirection from the Ogre Pond with the Spore. Terror Blast, though, normal type, still at plus one. No Vessel of Ruin deals uh, basically a two-hit KO onto the Ogre Pond, but more importantly, it left it susceptible to this double down focus of a knockoff and an Ivy Cudgel, maybe to rationalize would have actually been enough to pick up the KO there. Yeah, there's a really good move there from Richard, doubling in on the Porygon 2, getting rid of that item, so important for the defensive capabilities of the Porygon 2, and then doubling down into it with that Ivy Cudgel, and I think, like you say, if it had to rationalize here, mm -hmm. probably would have been enough to pick up that no knockout onto the Porygon 2, which then frees up your landers to have a much easier time, because I think if you're Alex you don't want to terrestrialize with your Porygon 2 until a Landorus has been removed from the field. Right. And I think with Richard as well, you don't want to bring the Landorus onto the field until the Porygon 2 has been removed. Well, yeah, I think that's well said because in this scenario, we still are, of course, in the point where the Porygon 2 can be a threat. It can recover. So it will likely try to go for that in order to further add its longevity on the field, which it does. Right, quite rightly so, but in this scenario, there's nothing really stopping that comma O from actually getting an iron defense set up. No, and that's the problem, I think. The Porygon 2 takes so much of the trainer's attention on the opposite side of the field, it leaves whatever's next to it yep. kind of free to do what it wants. And that's the one thing you really want to try and avoid with the Coma Or, because if it gets one Iron Defense up, it's going to be in that position where it can start throwing out those big damaging attacks onto your side of the field. And especially in a preferable situation with the Trick Room up, yep. that's not something you want to be staring down on. Yeah, and I think it's sort of what uh, a bit of an inkling that Richard has identified, hence why he's actually opted to bring that Urshifu, even though, of course, 
course, uh, fighting does resist the uh, dark typing. Wicked Blow is a good way to be able to sort of uh, punch through the, that setup of the iron defenses here and maybe even directly threaten a Porygon too. Yeah, of course as well, but it does have to be careful about those body press because the thing is, the body press is going to be super effective into the Urshifu. Even if it goes for the Terrestrialization to increase the power of the Wicked Blow, you're still going to be susceptible to taking huge damage after that iron defense right. boost that the Como has got access to. Yeah, and I think at this point it's more so Alex trying to make the decision on trying to go for the full offensive or anticipating any sort of redirection capability that still is available on Richard's side. But no, we have the Amoongus now actually switching in. Follow me does come out right here. So it's just more so up to the preference on if this can pick up the KO. And it does. It is enough. Of course, same type attack bonus with that body press fighting type move is so, so good. And one of the key points of running the combo. Yeah, huge, huge turn here where oh, you are wow. able to see the knockout onto the Ogopon. And on top of that, wow. the switch into the Amoongus, catching that Wicked Blow. And the big important thing here is breaking that Focus Sash with the Rocky Helmet. That was such a nice play. Yeah, you're able to just immediately time that so nicely, especially with the Trick Room now actually expiring. Richard does have that Fake Out Pressure still available. and um, But... Once again, Alex can easily read into that, try to make a, a re-adaptation to that, more of a reactive stance, and try to bring that Porygon 2 back in. Yeah, and I think you would do that in regards to just getting that Regenerator activated, because between the Amoongus, the Komo o, and the Porygon 2, you've got a really good call there to take forward in this match. Yeah, but no, fake out targets into the Komo o. The team lose, actually, the Pokemon of choice here, which is really nice. It's able to resist that wicked blow, so a uh, very valid switch in there, and all of a sudden, we're in a scenario where, okay, uh, Incineroar no longer has access to fake out, at least for this turn. Team Lu can try to threaten down this Incineroar, whilst at the same time, the Komo O can focus down on the Urshifu. So this may force uh, Richard's hand into perhaps utilizing that Ghost Terror on the Incineroar. Yeah, the, this would be a good time to kind of utilize that. But if you do go down that road, then you haven't got it to take advantage of on something like your Urshifu or that Landorus that we know is in the back that has that big damage output that you might need to rely on in the face of this Como O because the Urshifu sash being broken, it's on a bit of a timer now. It takes one attack from that Como O. You're not going to be able to pick up the knockout with the Wicked Blow. If in return you get knocked out, then all the pressure comes down onto that Landorus. As we're going to see the Regenerator just proving why it's such a great ability on this Amoongus, it's going to be able to come back onto the field with around 70-80% of its health, but the Ghost Terror is revealed on the Incinera. It's going to be able to bypass any sort of body press focuses onto that slot. Yeah, and a really good call from yourself. Obviously avoiding the body press if it comes out into that slot, but a nice protect there from the Urshifu. But again, Alex reacting really well in this situation, getting the Moongus onto the field, activating that regenerator from a couple of turns earlier. It's a lot healthier now. It is going to take a parting shot for its trouble. Minus one in attack and special attack. Yep. And it does allow the Landorus to come onto the field. But because you have got the Amoongus on the field, with that redirection, you can protect the Como O for at least one turn. Now, you can play a game where you cycle out the Urshifu Shifu into the Incineroar now and protect the Landorus if you're Richard because then that would allow you maybe the room where you can go for the fake out and then attack into the Coma or and not lose any resources while doing it but does Alex kind of spot that going into this turn? Oh no just a raw close combat no switch outs from Richard's side of the field and you see why uh, iron defense is so so crucial with these physical offensive Pokemon but not enough with the double up of the earth power so close no redirection from that Amundius body press just goes into the Landorus showing that it may have actually been a great indication of the substitute being broken, which would still allow the spore from the Amoongus to focus into that Alandra slot. That is a huge, huge turn here. You can see Richard really doing everything in his power to try and get rid of that coma all, but just not quite enough. It just hangs on slightly. And a really smart play there from Alex, targeting into the unobvious choice of the Alandra. Yep. Like you say, covering in case that substitute went up and in case that Urshifu switched out into the Incineral, not losing anything this turn and getting a big reward with that spore on top of that body press. Yeah, completely capitalizing off of the momentum is really the name of the game right here as you're whittling down Rich's remaining resources, especially now that the Landers has been put to sleep. That means that slot is either going to be susceptible to a full damage KO perhaps into the Landers or forces that Incineral into it.
in the subsequent turn. Yeah, and that's the problem. I think the Incineral coming in is not as effective as you need it to be here. We are seeing the Oshifu leave the field now and opting for its place is going to be that Incineral. We'll be able to drop another Intimidate down onto the field. It's not going to be threatened by any spores because it has got access to that safety goggles item. So pretty safe to bring in here in front of this Coma or and the Amoongus. But if you do see Alex go for that body press in to oh. the Landorus, it's not this time, unfortunately. It would have picked up the knockout. No, so very nice little switch there from Richard's side. Still pulling out all of the stops. However, the Amoongus does opt to go for that pollen puff and in combination with the leftovers, all of a sudden, we are at about 5-10% HP remain on the combo. It's been skyrocketed back up to around 75. Yeah, and you can see how important this Amoongus is. You know, Alex not taking any risks here. He doesn't get anything out of that turn damage-wise, but making sure he got something out of it with that pollen puff topping up the Coma Orb, probably putting it out of range of an Earth Power now, making it a little safer to guarantee a body press into that Landorus slot. And the thing is now, the Incineral out onto the field, so there's no safe switch in there. It's an easy pin for Alex to target that slot, keep targeting it, and then just cycle the Amoongus in and out with that Ting Lu, make sure it's protected, yep. and then you're eventually going to pick up the knockouts one by one on Richard's side of the field. Very difficult position for Richard to be in. Yeah, and Landorus, of course, does take a bit of a more uh, well-needed sleep there in order to try to regain its strength going into the remaining of this game. But Ting Lu now having Vessel of Ruin available on the field means that even if it did wake up, it will most have likely not pick up a KO unless there's any sort of RNG involvement with a critical hit there. And of course as well, the one thing that the Ting Lu has access to is those dark type attacks. And now the Incineral is a ghost yep. type that is going to be hit by those for super effective damage. And we're going to see a terrestrialization oh. into the fairy type, not something you commonly see on on the Ting Lu, but rocking that heart on top of its head as it is going into this next turn. Yeah, and with much lava from this Ting Lu, it will try to dispatch of uh, this uh, Incineral, but not before the Coma O oh, focus with the body press into the Landorus does pick up the KO, just like we said. However, parting shot actually being a really nice utility and a bit of an indication of the speed interactions between that Incineral and the Ting Lu. Incineral actually moving first. We'll be able to drop it down to minus one of its attack bring in that Urshifu, which unfortunately is susceptible to a Terror Blast if Alex has made the read. Let's see if that is the read. It oh, is the Terror Blast the and he's called it into that Incineral, <laughs> into the Urshifu. Yeah. Super effective. Will it be enough? It is yeah, enough. Of course it's enough. It's times four. Super effective. That Urshifu is out for the count. And unfortunately for Rich right here, it looks like the riding is on the wall. Incineral will most likely not be able to bring it back against this core four that Alex has been able to bring. An incredible play here from Alex, making it impossible for Richard to get a foothold in this match, leaving the Incineral to come back in, and it is going to be susceptible to a flurry of attacks from the Tinglu. You've got to worry about the Amoongus and the Porygon 2 still in the back for Alex. He can cycle him in for the Coma or Not going to be effective in this situation. Yep. And what a masterclass here, once again on stream by Alex Gomez. Yeah, and I think at that point, you sort of feel like you've Engaged, um, uh, Richard's play style and a sort of reactiveness to your uh, bit of an obvious dark type move focus in there. So I just wanted to completely take advantage of that scenario. Flare Blitz, not quite enough to pick up the KO. Doesn't look like there's any sort of burn that has been incurred, but I think this is just sort of a, 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 a thought of process of, right, the game is starting to come to its end. What else can I do? Is there any way I can utilize RNG? But I like to just making sure he makes those safe plays, makes those safe switches and puts himself in a situation where he's just going to wrap this up. Yeah, and I think now with the Porygon 2 coming back onto the field, going to be able to soak up another Flare Blitz pretty easily here. You've got the Amoongus that can just keep that Porygon 2 topped up with the Pollen Puff if it needs to, or yep. just even chip down the Incineral here to get a little bit extra damage onto it, but the Porygon 2 going to be in a position where it is very difficult to remove from the Incineral. Going for this Flare Blitz, the recoil going to be the main yep. subject of Richard's downfall. As Alex is going to be your winner of round seven.